Well, hello there. This is Joan Turner of jonesartgallery.com and I am here to do a tutorial for a mandala. This is the mandala we're gonna make. And if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you know that we usually go and we put all the guidelines on and all that good stuff, trying to get it just right. But this time, I'm gonna kind of go rogue a little bit because I kind of do anyway. After I put all those guidelines on there, I just kind of do whatever, anyhow. So I thought, let's try it. Let's make it into a class project, okay? Bethany at the Drake Council on Aging is the one who asked me to do these tutorials for you. And I agreed very quickly to do them because they are great fun. And especially now when people are kind of, uh, I know we're kind of into this pandemic and people are kind of getting the hang of it and the distancing and the, all the mask wearing, you know, all that good stuff. But some of us are still at home and uh, looking to fill our days somewhat. So uh, these tutorials are for that purpose. And you can actually call the center. It's the Drake Council on Aging. And I know that they have a certain number of art sets that they actually give out um, to people who want to come and pick them up. And they will give you things like canvases and paints and brushes and all that good stuff. So give them a ringy dingy, okay? I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's the Drake Council on Aging. And Bethany is the Wonder Woman who runs that place. She's like totally awesome. As a matter of fact, they're all totally awesome there. It's a wonderful place. Okay, without further ado, all right, let's start. All right, so that one of the things that you're gonna need is a, a canvas or a canvas board. Okay, so what's the difference between a canvas and a canvas board? Um, a canvas board is, is thin. It's a thin board like this, all right, where a stretched canvas is a, a piece of canvas that's stretched over a wood frame like this, okay? So it's canvas, but it's stretched and then stapled around the back. Uh, so these are stretched canvases, and today I'm going to use a canvas board, but you can actually use whatever you have, okay? You can use a canvas board, you can use a stretched canvas, you could use a piece of wood. Um, I, had, I have had people uh, do these on like uh, records, old LPs. I know I'm dating myself a little bit here, but you can dot and paint on just about anything, okay? So for today, I'm going to use, this is an eight by eight um, canvas panel. You could, it doesn't have to be uh, eight by eight, it can be eight by 10. And I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the kits that are being sent out are eight by 10. So like I said, it's, it's not so much of an issue, okay? So you will need a canvas, all right? You will need a palette, all right? In this case, it's a paper plate, okay? You can use an artist can, uh, an artist palette, which um, uh, you can use that. It's, or you could have disposable palettes, there's wooden palettes, um, or you can just use plastic coated plate, a paper plate, right? So, I mean, I have all kinds of palettes, even disposable palettes. Disposable palettes look like regular palettes, only they have peel off sheets of wax coated paper so that you don't have to clean them after. They make it really easy for us. And it's one of the reasons why I use the plates too, because you know we're going to use acrylic paints. Um, so the acrylic paints have a tendency to dry out really fast and all that cool stuff. So after I'm done with it, I just throw them away. It's a lot easier. Okay. So you're going to need a palette. You're going to need a canvas or canvas board. You are going to need this handout so that you know what you're doing. All right. So. If you, once again, if you have one of those kits, this is actually in the kit. If you do not, just take a little snapshot here. Okay, take a look, all right? And like I said, usually I do a whole like setup here, but this, um, it's, it's really pretty. Um, and it seems relatively, I'm just gonna say relatively easy because usually, like I said, do a setup. This time I'm gonna just kind of wing it. So we'll see what it turns out like, whether or not it was really easy or not. Okay, you're also gonna need some paint, 
right? You're going to need blue paint. You're going to need pink paint. And actually, some of the, the blue dots in here are a little bit on the purpley side. So I actually took out some violet paint. Um, I took out some blue paint. And the pink, I have some pink paint here, but I kind of would like to mix it myself, all right? So what makes pink is red and white, of course. Okay, so either pink paint or red and white paint is fine. Plus, if you have paint kits, um, you know, you, you may not have purple in your paint kit. Blue and red makes purple. Okay, and again, you can mix your own favorite color. You're going to need black to cover this, uh, this canvas panel. Okay, so now I already covered it. It's still a little tacky. But you're going to want to use your black paint and paint this on here, all right? And after the first coat dries, do a second coat on it. Um, sometimes we mix different backgrounds for, for these, but without fail, I always end up doing touch up work afterwards. You know, I made a mistake or I did this or I did that, and so I need to touch it up. So if you're making a, uh, uh, a background that has a color, that you've mixed. Make sure you mix enough so that you have some left over. Um, let me show you what I mean here. Okay, so this, this picture, and actually this one too, I have a couple. These mandalas, right, have uh, kind of different, all different color backgrounds on them. So in order to do the touch-up work, you need to have some of that, some of that same paint. Okay, and if you don't, then you're going to have kind of a sweaty finish. And this one, this one has uh, all kinds of different colors in the background. So this one was really, really difficult to, to actually fix. Okay, so you want to, if you're going to do anything like that, if you're going to deviate from the black, then I'm going to say, make sure you have enough so that you can do the fixed part afterwards because without fail, you have to do a fixed part. Okay, so other than that, you will need dotting tools, right, which are actually just uh, nail decorating type things. Okay, so I have uh, quite a few here, which I don't know if we're actually going to use them all, but I have a big, a uh, uh, medium, smaller sizes, some smaller sizes here, right? If you do not have dotting tools, do not let that deter you. You may use uh, Q-tip pencils uh, with erasers on them. Um, someone even came up uh, with a brilliant idea. They had a pencil with an eraser, and they actually super glued uh, a quarter to one of them. Uh, a dime to another one, a nickel to another one. Okay, so they had different uh, size dotting tools. So if that's what you need to do, all right, and you want to have large, medium, small, all right, and even a pencil, okay, or a pen that's no longer working, okay, because you can use the points to make little dots, all right. So if, if you don't have dotting tools, and you really like doing the mandalas, you'll want to get some. They're very inexpensive. Um, but if you don't, it's actually not a big deal. And um, now that I'm saying that, I'm going to also say to you, get yourself, uh, have some Q-tips or cotton swabs nearby in case you have to pick up little, uh, little errory type things. So we have, I teach class, so we have a lot of little arrow, error type things, <laughs> a whole big thing of cotton swabs, right? So the other thing that you need is water, okay? Because your tools, when you're not using them, put them in the water, and you don't want to let uh, paint dry on the ends of the tools because you actually need, any round, flat surface will do, but you actually need it to stay flat. Okay, if the paint dries on the end of it, it's, uh, you're not going to get a nice flat circle. So you have paint, you have a palette, you have this, you have that, uh, a brush, of course, to put your, to put
put your black on. So if you're getting your uh, your uh, panel ready, all right, and you need to stop the recording, stop the recording, and let it dry. All right, so like I said, this is still kind of tacky, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. I get black on my hand. So I'm being deep yogurt. Make sure you wear art clothes, uh, acrylic paint. Once they dry, they become very permanent. Even if you decide that you're going to bleach them, the paint will not come out. The only way it will come out is if you kind of catch it while it's wet. So if you get a drop on you and you say, uh, you know, and you run into the uh, bathroom and kind of wash it with warm water and some soap, you probably can get it out. Um, but once it dries, it's pretty permanent. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start. So prepare prepare your, pa your uh, panel or canvas, stretch canvas, whichever one you're using, all right? So gather all your tools together, make sure you have paper towels nearby. No, this is not a big roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it's paper towels. And so make sure you have those nearby as well. You will want them. Okay, so stop the recording if you have to. Oh, my peach tea has, <laughs> my peach tea has paint in it. How did that happen here in the art room? And it really is peach tea. Everyone can say, what are you drinking in there? Really is peach tea. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so stop this if you need to. Get your, get your panel ready. I'm actually going to reposition the camera so that it's on the uh, on the canvas panel so you can see what I am doing, all right? And then we'll get back together again afterwards, all right? So can you see this? Okay. All right, and maybe we want to, there's a lot of, this, this is the art room, my art room, a lot of paint. <laughs> On the table here. So maybe if I put this here, you can see it better. Maybe. Although, like I said, they're black, you can see pretty good. Okay, so again, I'm gonna just, just start. So before I do that, I think I probably should find out where the middle is. And once we find out where is the middle, then we are, we are good to go. Okay. So I know that this is an eight by eight, so obviously uh, halfway is going to be four inches. So I'm gonna go four inches is, really is black, let's see. Two, three, four. Okay, so four inches, and it really is tacky. Right about here, okay, and then four inches this way. One, two, three, four, this way. Okay, so now I know my center is right there, and that is where I'm gonna put the first dot. Okay, so again, typically I make all kinds of lines and guidelines. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna wing it, baby. Okay, so I wanna, uh, while this is continuing to dry for me, hopefully yours is already dry, I wanna put out some paint on my palette. And the colors that I'm going to put out are, um, I'm not gonna put out some white because these middle, these middle blues are a little bit lighter than some of the ones over here. So uh, the types of paint that you can use, uh, this is Galleria paint, it's a little bit more expensive, uh, Premier, Liquitex, okay, and even, um, even some of, the, um, the acrylics that uh, come in these little bottles. The, this one's is Nina's All Purpose, but there's all different kinds. There's uh, Deco Art, um, kind of this one. Okay, this is Folk Art. Okay. So anything that you really want to use, go right ahead and use it, right? We want acrylic paint because it's going to, uh, like I said, be permanent and stuff. So I do want to use a half decent, half decent paint. So I'm going to take my white, which is running low, and that's why it's sitting upside down. Right, so you're going to be able to see 
how much I'm putting on here. And I'm probably putting a little bit more than what I need, but you know, the tendency here, like I say, is for the paint to dry out kind of kind of quickly. So um, so you'll want to probably do less rather than more. I'm trying to look and see where this light source is coming from here. You're getting a real glare. It's from this way. Okay. So here's my white. All right, the blue I'm using, um, this is a cerulean blue, which is kind of a really light blue. Now you do not have to have this exact same colors or uh, values, all right? So, I mean, you don't even have to do, you don't even have to do a pink and uh, blue mandala if you don't want to. You can do whatever your heart desires, but if you want to kind of follow along here, uh, that's what we're doing. We, uh, so I have white and I have blue out there, and I'm just going to kind of stop with the with the white and blue. Maybe add a little bit of violet here, right? Only because those uh, I'm going to really do a little bit of violet here because I use a lot of paint. And this one's almost empty. Okay, so so what I have on my palette is blue, cerulean blue, white, and a little bit of violet. Okay, and I am going to do. I'm going to start with this middle circle here. And how blue do we want you? Okay, so I'm going to need a little bit of a brush here. If you, you can use your brush to, to blend, certainly, or um, a palette knife. Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so, and the only reason I say that, and oh, I have sparkles on here. The, uh, my kids' class, we were working with sparkles because you can just never have enough bling. So there's some sparkle stuff here, which is hey, okay, we like it. All right. So for this lighter inside circle, I'm going to take a little bit of the white here and just a little bit of the blue because the blue is the stronger, more vibrant color here. Okay, now the trick here is to kind of make enough, although that's a pretty small area. So I want a light blue for the middle. Okay, so mix a blue that you like. Okay. okay, so now I want to make sure that I have uh, a little kind of puddle of paint here. And for the very first dot, I'm going to use the biggest tool I have, which happens to be this one. If you're using the, uh, the coin method, okay, it's probably the size of a quarter or even a nickel, okay. So um, I'm gonna take this brush and put it in the water. So when you're dipping, okay, your tool wants to go straight down and it should have this on the, on the tip of it, okay. And we wanna make sure we get half decent coverage, right? And right where my middle dot is, which is right here, I'm gonna go straight down. Ta-da! Okay, so now what you can see is a bunch of small dots that are going around there. So again, don't leave this dirty. Don't let this dry on here. Clean it off with a paper towel and then put it in your water dish, okay? So nothing is drying on there. Okay, so this little, these they are kind of little dots going around that middle. And I have a number of uh, dotting tools out here. I'm going to use a big, small one. <laughs> All right. So um, the, maybe uh, the size of a Q-tip, or if you take the cotton off the Q-tip and just use the stick pot, that's about the size of this. Okay. So now, again, um, I'm going to use the lighter blue, I think. This one a little bit blue for that, but not really, it's light. 
Okay, so I'm dipping this in there, and this is how much I have here. And I'm going to do a dot as close as I can. Okay, to the uh, to the north and south of this, and then I'm going to do one to the east and west of this. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So now that I have done that, I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to go in between them, like this and this, okay, and as close as you can without touching them. And because I'm held that up, I didn't quite get it in the right place. Okay, can you see okay? You can see, all right. So when I do this dot, I'm looking at that. So I'm really trying to line them up. Uh, if this happens, like I just cleaned this and the point came out, and you can always just glue them right back in. These are, um, these are awesome. Uh, they, if the points come out, you just put some super glue in there and they'll stay right in. But for right now, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep using that so we don't have to stop. Okay, so this is what I have so far. So I'm gonna use the same tool and in between, I'm gonna do two more. This is kind of sticking to my hand. <laughs> so they might dry properly. Okay, and one more right here. Okay, beauty, beauty. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit. I'm looking at the next set of dots, which are a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to, once again, clean this off and put it uh, in the water or just, maybe because this one is kind of needing a little extra help, or put it over there, put it over yonder. Okay, now I'm looking at some of these dots and maybe clean one off. I'm gonna fix one. I have a Q-tip, it's a cosmetic Q-tip is pointed on one side and round on the other and um, I have one here I'm not crazy about okay, so I'm gonna pull the paint off a little bit and again you know you could use black paint to fix that now I'm actually gonna wait till I get to the end because I typically have more than one thing that I need to fix. Okay, I'm going to take that little bump off of there. Okay, so now again, you can pull the uh, the cotton right off of this and just use the stick. But I'm going to go ahead and do the larger circle of um, of dots here, right? And this one, like I said, is about the about the size of that stick. Okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow the same procedure. That is to say, I'm going to, okay, these are actually between. All right, so we're gonna go between the little dots. There's one there. And I'm gonna look at this dot when I put this one in. And when I say it's in between the little dots, I am not lining them up with these little dots. I'm putting them in the spaces between them, okay? You're gonna find that you're only gonna be able to uh, get like a dot or two out of this. You're gonna have to keep dipping. Looking here, this one. Yeah. So look 
the cloth. Okay, make sure they line up. Make sure they're lining up for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in between those. Okay, I'm going as close as I can without actually touching, which um, takes a little bit of practice. So if you wanted to, you could actually stop this and practice on a sheet of paper, something on that idea. If you like me, you want to get right to it. Okay, that's what I have so far. All right. Clean off your tool, put it in the water. Okay, so now we have the big dot in the middle and we have the two going around the side. Now we have some dots, and they're even bigger. Maybe, maybe I want to put those in. Okay, so this one is about this, almost the size of a dime, not quite. But, and we're also going to the darker blues in here, okay? So I'm going to, once again, take my, my brush that I'm using for mixing, and I'm gonna put a little bit of purple in my blue, just to change that up just a little bit. So here's my brush. When this brush was in the water, so make sure that you actually get as much of the water out as you can. All right, so now I am going to take this blue, add a little over here, all right? And we have one, two, three, four rows of this type of blue. So we're going to make sure we have enough here. And I'm going to take some of the purple and mix it right in here. Okay, can you see that? That is so awesome. Okay, I want to lighten it just slightly. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white. Nice. See, when you mix your own, it's very exciting. And no, yours does not have to look just like this. Okay, so I'm trying to kind of get it all together here so I can dip in here like this. Okay, and let me use my tool here to kind of get the paint off this brush. And again, you could use a um, you could use a palette knife to do this. Okay. I'm going to take the excess off of here, but um, I'm actually going to use some of the paint that's on here, all right? Because again, you know, after a while, you get to know the amount of paint that you need to have on this tool. Right? So I'm going to dip in here. And again, I'm going to follow the same kind of pattern that I was doing before, which is in between, okay, in between the two big blue ones. Okay, now I'm looking at this one when I line up for this one. This one. And this one, okay. So that's how I stop them to try and get them straight. And remember that we're kind of we're not using any guidelines because, like I said, typically when I use the guidelines, I kind of stop using them eventually anyway. So I decided let's just go rogue here. So fun, so good. So when you make one, you're looking across at another. Now. Um, and I'll say this a couple of times. 
if I'm going too fast for you, drop the recording and take your time and just catch up. Fine. And in between uh, those dots that I put down, I'm putting additional dots and trying not to get blue on here. I already have sparkles, <laughs> sparkles on it. Okay, I'm just turning my canvas board around. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's bring this one out just to kind of redraw that one just a little. Okay. So it's really not really real difficult here. I'm going to go ahead and do a second row, all right, using the same paint and the same, um, and the same tool. And I'm going to follow the same procedure. So lining up, use your eye to kind of line these up, right? And again, if you need more time, you feel you need more time, that is a-okay. Stop the recording. This is what I have so far. Okay, now I can fit two in there. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this off just a little bit here because again, you don't want um, you don't want clumps of paint drying on there. I'm actually gonna kind of move this back in and kind of puddle it in the middle again so that I can pick up the amount of paint that I need. And I'm gonna put two. More dots in between each of those dots. Okay. This is very exciting to see this just kind of happening and I'm enjoying not having to do the setup here. I'm just kind of doing these. Awesome. Okay. So this one is a little sparse, so I'm going to just redot it. Okay, so if you're redotting, kind of make sure you're, you dot it in the same place. You're double dotting. Okay. Here are my dots. See, okay. All right. And now we have kind of big dots going on here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put, clean that off and put that in the water. And actually, I think I'm going to have to mix a little bit more of this so that we can get one more, one more row out of you. Okay. And if it's slightly different, even better. Okay. So when you're mixing, the tendency is to kind of spread it out, but then you have to kind of bring it back in a little bit. So, and these dots want to be just a little bit bigger. So we're going to go uh, to a little bit bigger size. And in this case, I'm going to use my painted dotting tool, which is about the size of a dime. Okay. Okay, same procedure. Yeah. 
and there, which didn't come out right. So we're gonna re-dot it. And again, you wanna try and make sure if you're gonna double dot something, get it in the right place. All right, so remember that procedure. Do space them out as best as you can. And then we wanna put some, I'm gonna put one right in the middle of each of those. Look here. We got that one. And these dots, because I actually didn't mix the paint all that well, a little bit variegated, which is kind of cool. It looks awesome. So now we're going to try to get one, two dots in between. One, two. Okay. So again, you know, this, this may take a little bit of uh, practice, but you absolutely can do it. Okay, that's looking good. Touching a bit. So I'm gonna just go in with my Q tip here a little bit. Take some of that off of there. A little, a little fix here and there. Ta-da! Okay, cleaning this off and in the water. Okay, so now I'm thinking I want to go. Wow, how pretty, pretty! Um, I want to go uh, do put in. See the blue, pink, blue, pink. Let's put those in, and they're going to be the same. Um, Maybe not, maybe we're gonna go down the size, all right? So I am going to keep my light blue, okay? Which means clean off this brush. Okay, so I wanna keep this light blue in here. And I wanna make sure that I mix enough of it here. Push it all in the middle again. Okay, and now I want to mix um, some pink. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of red on on my palette. See, it's just a little dot of red, and I'm gonna get another brush. I think. I have some peach tea. And now, with this brush, okay, what I would like to do is find a place to put this brush. Let's put that one there, because in case I want to keep mixing. So I have a little bit of red there. I'm going to take this white, and I'm going to take my little bit of red and mix that right in there, okay? Now red is the stronger or more vibrant color in here. So it's going to, dependent upon how much red I'm putting in here, we're gonna get a nice pinky color. Okay. 
So, and if we want it um, even pinker than that, and I'm thinking that we do actually, I'm gonna pick up some more red and put that in here. Move this, move this here so you can see what I'm doing. And that maybe even a little bit more brilliant than that. I wonder if we should try some of this one. You want to end up with a with a pink that you like. Whoa, okay, that one will definitely work. Okay, so different brands of pink, certainly, uh, different textures. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in there. I like this. Okay, so that we have a nice pink in here. Okay, so now I have a brush with pink on it. I have a brush with blue on it. Blue right there. All right. So I'm going to take this brush here, this uh, dotting tool about the size of a nickel, and I'm going to do take the pink first. Okay, so I'm dipping, dipping in my pink. All right. And again, we're going to do the north south thing. Here. Okay, so when I do this dot, I'm looking across at uh, the other dots. Make sure you have lots of paper towels. Okay, so I'm going to actually clean this off because I'm going to actually use it for the um, the blue dots also but I did get some pink paint on here so again um, you know you're always going to end up doing some cleanup work afterwards so I'm just gonna kind of leave that there for now okay I did take most of it off but I, I'll end up going over some spots with the black paint afterwards okay so now I have my four pink dots on I'm going to put the or blue dots on. And I'm going to use the same tool over the other side. Okay, and use your eye to line these babies up. There we go. That looks good. One more over here. Line them up with your eye. This is actually working out pretty good, even though we're not using all these, these guidelines. All right, so. We are so ready. Okay, so I am going to take, clean off this tool and put it in the water. All right, and then I'm going to take um, this small tool. Let's take a look and see what we have here. We have the really light blue on here first, which is this cool stuff going on. Let's go even lighter, a little lighter. Okay, so I'm going to take the white and add it to this blue and make this really baby blue color. It's really quite gorgeous. Okay, if you don't mix it well, you're going to end up with a little bit of variegated paint, which, like I said, can actually be quite beautiful. All right, so I want to try and get this off of here. I can actually get it on the uh, on the dotting tool. So I'm going to use the dotting tool that is most like like a pen point, right? Because I'm looking for uh, small dots here. Okay. So do I want this? Uh, I'm going to use the smaller side. I think. I actually, need to have one even smaller. Do I want to go that small? Maybe, maybe, baby. Okay, so 
This one is like the point of a pencil or a pen that you're no longer using. Okay, yeah, close up your paints. Okay, so now around the, um, actually around all of them, both the, both the pink and the blue, I'm gonna do this little dotting type thing. And I'm going to, uh, we're gonna use a steady hand. I'm gonna sit, sit, sit. I'm seat to myself down. I'm going to use the, oh, I didn't clean this one too good. But, I try. Um, I'm gonna use the smaller side of this. And like I said, it's about the, about the size of a ballpoint pen um, or a pencil. Okay, so let's see here. These are small. Okay, so I'm gonna use the small side, hopefully. You can see me okay over here. I will hold it up, All right? So I'm gonna use the lightest blue that I have. And this is actually called walking the dots, right? When you kind of uh, take this and do this. You're walking the dots down the, um, down the side of the big dot. Okay, can you see that? Okay. And what ends up happening is, is the uh, tool ends up running out of paint. So the dots actually even get a little bit smaller as they as you start to go along. So so this is a this is a fun, this is very meditative actually. Okay, very meditative in uh, in in that you're really kind of focusing on the this is going all the way around. Right, so now I'm going all the way around the little blue, and again, as close as you can without actually touching them. And these are uh, going around the, uh, the blue dots and the pink dots. So keep going, keep going. My big blue donuts are probably, it could be a little bit darker here. So maybe after, uh, one, of the, one good thing about using acrylic paints is that once it dries, you can actually, um, you can actually just redot them. And some of these dots, you can put top dots on. Well, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll top dot. Because I'm thinking about these blue, these darker blue ones here. Very pretty. Okay, so like I said, this take um, this is going to take a little longer because the dots are a lot smaller. So this is like I said, I did this um, at classes, and I have a student who uh, wanted to try to do a mandala because she had seen them, she liked them. She's like, I'm not sure. I have enough patience to do them. And I have to tell you, it's, it's a valid point because 99.9% .9 of students and people who try this absolutely love it. But every now and then, there's that one person who says, oh my goodness, this is just, you know, they like the final outcome, but it's like, it takes a lot of work to get us there. So for me, it's like anything else, you know, it certainly can be a labor, but it's a labor of love. So it's like, you know, this is a tutorial, so I'm trying not to, uh, you know, make it go beyond a, a reasonable amount of time. But something like this, you could pick it up and put it down and continue to work on it another time, you know, obviously find a good stopping place. But um, if you're trying to do it all in one sitting, the way that we are kind of now, then I could see how 
you know, someone could say, well, I don't know. Yeah. But one of these, uh, I want to say the last one we did, we spent two and a half hours, three and a half hours, which is not bad for a finished piece at all. Okay. However, um, some people can't sit for two and three hours and do a piece. So with the tutorials, I don't mind them taking that long because like I said, you can always just stop them and catch up or you can stop them and then um, start them again, even another day if you wanted to, okay? So these tutorials, um, we're gonna put them up on uh, Drake It Access TV station. We're gonna put them up on the Ricker Access TV station. Um, the uh, tech person there, her name is Tara, and she is the most amazing person. So she gives me all these tips, like put the camera this way, make sure the lighting is that way. She's like, I hope you don't mind. And I'm like, you can, I don't mind you giving me advice. I need all the advice I can get. And then she does cool things like she'll change the lighting <laughs> around. So she makes me look better. She makes me look good, or at least she tries. So, uh, so again, these will be up on DATV, they'll be up on BATV, um, I will put them up on Facebook, and Joan Dark Gallery, and Drake It. So they'll be up all over the place, and they're absolutely free. Um, you'll love them. And, and like I said, Bethany is the one who actually came up with the idea to do them for people kind of at home, okay. So now we have the first little row of dots here. So we're actually gonna do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we can do it, we can do it. All right, so I'm going, and each row gets a little bit bigger. So I'm going to switch to the other side now and do another row of dots here. Okay. So this is the big side, at least I hope it is. Did I pick the small side again? This is bigger. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Let's go here. Okay, this one. This one's definitely bigger. Okay. So anything that's a little bit bigger than what you were using, go for it. All right. So again, uh, I'm going to start at the top here. And this time I am going to line it up. With the one that's already there, okay, and maybe go and put one on each one just to give me a starting point. Okay. All right. All right. And your tool, you should be holding it straight up. Ta-da! Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. This one has a little tail on it. Okay, don't think we're gonna do that. Let's do it this. And this time we're gonna do the other side because we really have a lot of blue. And now you now you know why we have eye clothes. <laughs> right. So let's And I will show you what it looks like. And you will be impressed because it is awesome. And um, like I said, if you take your time and do it, it's really quite, quite relaxing and beautiful. Okay, isn't that awesome? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that around all of them. And you can stop it, you can jump ahead if this is going too slow for you. Okay. Starting to wonder if I mix my paint here again. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. I'm 
I am also, uh, I do some work with the Way to Havel Art Association. And um, I give them a copy of these tutorials as well. I upload them to my YouTube channel. And this is, this is my way of really, really trying to share and do my part to really kind of help people. I'll show you again after this. When um, the Greater Havel Art Association actually um, asked one of the uh, members to do some tutorials or demos. Can you look, see, look, nice. And the person doing the demos is Susan Yellen, and she's awesome and doing an awesome job. So I'm um, go there and record her. And she's also a teacher. And I'll tell you, she's one smart teacher. Um, I have been teaching for a lot of years. And some of the stuff she was saying, I was like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So she's, uh, she's very, very informed and very informative. So, and if you want to see some of her demos, which are all also free to you. Um, we are at Greater Havel Art Association is at uh, havelartsassociation.org. Okay, so, so Bethany, you started a chain reaction of nice things. Um, although the one, the Greater Havel Art Association one was, uh, we were asked to do it by the president of the Greater Havel Arts Association. It was Ian Jones. And she's a doll. She had a board meeting at her home a couple of weeks ago. And after the board meeting, she made us all hamburgers and hot dogs. And she has this awesome pool. And she was just one cool boss. Well, we are closing in on our second row of dots here. Okay, and again, I might be moving a little fast in the interest of time. Slow it down, stop it. Look, I'm so excited. All right, okay, so I'm going to clean this guy off. And this is the one that's kind of falling apart. So we're just swishing in the water and rinse them off and just kind of put them aside here. But now, oh wait, here's the big side. This is it. Um, this one, yeah, so big. Maybe Q-tip, maybe take that cotton off the Q-tip side and use the, uh, and use the, just the stick. Okay. So we're getting ready to do our one, two, three, third, okay, third uh, set of dots here, All right? And again, it's the same color, is it? One, two, three, it is. So hopefully we don't have enough paint to do all these, okay? So once again, I'm gonna give myself kind of a uh, start of dots here. And you want to uh, line them up appropriately. Okay, I think this big. That's a better. Don't any blobs here. It's work of art. So this is what I have as a start of my third uh, set of dots here. I'm going to clean it off. Have a sip of peach tea here. I'm looking at this little guy over here. I'm going to put it on the dots there. Right there. So that's 
that's the good part. You can always kind of go back, take a look, and see what's cooking. Okay, so now this big one. I think I made that first dot a little bit bigger. Just wanted it to really hang out. Okay, look. Neat. Nice. I'm going to make that first dot a little bit bigger. Nice. I'm telling you, it is worth it, worth the extra effort. My computer's saying to me, as long as it's in the good side. Okay. So these dots, once again, you kind of want them as close as you can get them without actually having them touch each other. That's what kind of makes them look good. What is it say? We want them to have them. Okay. But now I'm changing my tune completely. Okay, these four are done. Yeah, five. And the ones with the single dots still need to be done. So again, I'm gonna, there's no such thing as like too much practice. So if you find that you're kind of uncomfortable doing this, then kind of stop and just get a piece of paper and practice dotting. You won't be sorry. Very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this dot up a little bit. And maybe this one too. Give them a little bit more height. So I'm liking the ones that have a little bit more height to them. So I'm changing them. The squeaking that you hear, my aunt table, which is a big eight feet long by four. So we can actually even distance in this class a little bit. Okay, we are so getting there. This is awesome. And I wasn't sure, you know, I thought, okay, you know, I tried to pick a, a design that, you know, would be. I would be pretty. It's like when people do um, like wine paints and sun paints, a lot of times the instructors are picking things that they feel is within the capability of someone who has never drawn or painted before. And that's totally necessary because 
even though some people who come to those events um, have painted or drawn before, some have not. So I find even even for myself, you know, I'm looking for um, subject matter that is pretty much made up of basic shapes. Okay, now the basic shapes are the circle, square, cylinder, triangle. Right, so that means you know if you have a house in your composition, you know, it's basic shape, cube, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can do those things. So again, you know, I feel like it's important to have something easy enough that people can do, but I also would like to end up with something that I wouldn't mind having in my home. You know, it's like some of these things that I see, you know, when, they, when people, um, Bring them home they're like these trees with these curly q branches and blah 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 and so i mean it was a fun night out and if you know and if that's okay that's okay too but um but i would like to have something that i wouldn't mind hanging in my house so so sometimes um i choose things that might be a little bit more involved but uh, at least at the end you have something that you really uh, do. you can really have something to show for it okay so i'm going to switch to the darker blue here all right and do the next row of dots here which is actually this blue but i ain't going to go with that blue <laughs> oh you can't see what i'm even saying here all right so the next blue is here, but I'm going to go with this blue because I really love the cerulean. So I'm going to go there with, with the next row. And I'm also thinking that I'm going to go bigger, bigger, um, a little bit bigger. Let's see. That as big as this one? Pretty much. So I'm actually looking for something a little bit bigger than what we already have in there. This one's a lot smaller. Okay, so while this one is smaller than this one, okay, I'm going to use this one. And then for the next row, I'll use that other one. All right, so this one, uh, actually just anything bigger than what you've already been using will work here, okay? So again, I am going to use this cerulean blue here because it's really pretty, I'm really liking it. And I'm gonna put it right there. And again, I'm going to kind of do my starter dots, and I'll show them to you. And I'm just lining them up with the dots that are already there. Take a look. Nice and nice. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'm actually going to do two on either side of these, and then I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch to a smaller one. Okay, so can you see that? Those three dots, and then we're going to switch to a smaller stylus or a daughter. Okay. And I'll show you this in a second. Okay, and the reason I'm doing the making uh, these a little bit different size because I want them to have a little bit more shape to them. And they have. So they're coming out very round, which uh, I like, but I would also like to have a little bit of a of a point in this one. Okay, have some white in it because I was 
is mixing tea. Okay, so stop the recording if you need to catch up. But I put three dots there on each one of those. So now I'm going to clean this one off and put it in the water. And I'm going to switch to, again, my big pen point. Okay, and I'm going to use this same blue that I used for these dots. And I'm going, going to walk them here. Okay, so here's one side right here. You see that? Okay, so this tool is um, a little bit smaller than uh, the tool that I used for the first three dots. Okay, so here's the whole thing done. Now see, that has a little bit nicer shape to it. So that's, that's making me very happy. And believe it or not, um, it's AC in this house, but this uh, this is <laughs> so happy. I must have put a ton. Um, I told everyone that they should have two coats on their um, on their canvas board, and I was only putting one because I didn't want to take the time to <laughs> wait for it to dry and apply another one. So I just put like a really heavy coat on and now it's actually sticky. It's actually sticky. So hopefully you let your eyes dry out really good. Oh, nice. See, look, look. Nice and nice. That's really coming along now. I'm so happy. This is, I think, this is the, I want to say third, third Mandala tutorial. And the other, the other two, like I said, are very measured, very measured out. And I have to say, this one, I was a little bit leery, but had always wanted to try just uh, kind of just putting the dots on there and seeing what happens. And I have to say, yeah, I like it just fine. Just fine. Hold that dollar up straight. And, and uh, what ends up happening is if you don't hold the daughter straight up and down, you don't get really nice round dots. You get kind of sideways dots, which, if you like sideways dots, more power to you. But these want to be round. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, now I have to fix. This paint dries very quickly, and even on these tools while you're using them. So every now and then, just kind of stop and clean them because you want to, you're putting all this time and effort into it. You would like to look nice, right? I have to say, I am so totally liking this. Someone told me one time that I'm my own best fan. And I think I said it in the beginning of this tutorial. And that would be absolutely right. I'm just like, this is so much fun. I'm just loving it. Okay. So, 
So now we're going to put maybe one more dot. I'm going to say let's eliminate the other dot because we're going to run out of room for the last circle because I made them so big. So let us do the pink, outside pink here, right? So clean off your tool, put it in the water. Uh, I'm going to use this brush to make sure my pink is mixed well because it's been sitting there for a while. I just want to make sure it's still usable, which it seems to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the same uh, dotting tool that I used to make these dots, and that was the yellow dotting tool. Okay, so these pink dots we are going to put right in the middle. Okay, we're going to put them in the middle of these blue dots, and I will show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to dip in my pink and then put this right in the middle here. Ta-da! Okay, so right in the middle. Okay. Each one. Okay, see what's happening here? Beauty, beauty, beauty. Like it. Okay, so I'm kind of moving along here. If you need to, stop the recording. And I know I keep saying it, but I don't want you to rush through this. So like I said, this is kind of, uh, you, know, um, you know, for the sake of time, I'm kind of moving right along here. But if, it was, if I was not making a tutorial, I would not be. I would take my time. Okay, so take your time. Do a good job. I tell the students, take your time, do a good job. They'll be like, oh, but it takes you like two seconds. And it's like, well, you know, there. It's like anything else. Once you do something enough, you know, it gets a little bit easier to do. And they're like, oh my gosh, you make it look so easy. And I'll be, well, it is now, but it wasn't way back when. Okay, so we're gonna do. Uh, one row of small pink dots. So I'm actually going to use the same dotting tool that we were just uh, uh, using to make the second row of blue dots, okay, which is uh, about the size of the, um, the blue dots in here. There, how school it is, um, which is about the size of um, the Q tip. Just the wooden pot. Okay. Let me put this in. Okay. So we're going to do a pink. Okay. Let's do pink. And I will show you what that looks like. A little bit more here. Okay, we are going to, I'm trying to decide how far to go in with these dots. All right, little pink dots around the big pink dots. That's what you're doing. Yeah, the spoon door open. Or maybe it's too far next door. Could be. Okay, let's do another job there. Okay, see what that's all looking like? These babies right here. I have to tell you, it's all just awesome. I'm putting in my lead dots here. Okay. 
Okay, and again, you know, the tendency is for the tool to run out of paint uh, kind of kind of fast. So let that let that be okay and just dip as much as you need to. So for once in your life, it's okay to be a dip. A bigger dot right here. I like it. Let's do a bigger dot. Okay. All right, so I have four done. I need to do one, two, three, four more. Add a dot. And again, you know, the squeaky, squeaky table. Um, this squeaky table, I have to say, uh, I have been at my home here in uh, Haverhill, and I live in a townhouse, which is three floors. So the bottom floor is, is where my art studio is. And I have been here going on about 25 years. And the very first year that I was here, I had this art table made. So it's a custom made art table. And um, so the fact that it's a little squeaky is uh, understandable, certainly. And um, it's held up amazingly well. And I think I showed you already how much paint is actually on the table. Um, adults are pretty conscientious, you know. I mean, there's so much paint here that it probably doesn't make too much difference. But if they spill paint, I see them kind of wiping it up. I have um, children in one of my classes. And so, you know, I'll say to them, you know, so they'll be like, Miss Joan, is it, you know, what happens if we get paint on the table? And so, say, well, it's okay, it, you know, it's, but just, um, you know, if you see that it gets on there, just, just kind of wipe it off, honey. So I'm watching the, the kids one day, and I look over to see what one of them is doing. It's actually painting on the table. And kids are so cool. They are just so uninhibited. Um, you know, they're just... I want to make purple sunshine in Brooklyn. I'm like, by all means, make purple sunshine. You know, they're just terrific. Okay, we're going to go with a blue. And I am going to go bigger with the blue back to this guy. All right, which again, you know, about the size of a, a stick, maybe a little bit smaller. But I want to go this. It's kind of nice light blue, I'm thinking. What do I do with the brush? Okay, so that being the case, yeah, I'm going to need more white paint. Okay, so this is my, I want to use this light blue here, so I don't quite have uh, enough paint to do that. So I'm gonna, I have enough blue, right now, but I'm going to put a little bit more white out. Again, keeping that kind of upside down. And then mix this white in here. Definitely need a little bit more blue. Let's put the blue in. Okay, so mixing and trying to keep it all in place. It's very difficult for me to do because I want to mix it up all over the place. Okay, so that's this. This is a lot of light blue, so we should have more than enough here. Okay, so I'm kind of moving it all into the center. And I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did with the, uh, the larger blue, and that is uh, I'm going to make three, three dots, like one in the middle, like this. And then one on each side. And again, that made such a, a nice uh, 
curl. Okay, so I'm gonna do it to these as well. Okay, and I can see little blue things from my hand, all kinds. So obviously, we're gonna do some cleanup. So this light blue on here. Stain with a color scheme. And I really, really mixed a lot, which is okay because we need to actually do a row of this color and then the rest actually is all pink so maybe maybe we do not do all of it okay so i have three blue dots around my pink dots okay so i'm going to clean this tool put it in the in the water and now i'm going to take um, the tool that is like the pin point and walk it right down side of this pink dot. There she is. Okay, as close as you can without actually touching. And at this point, I'm actually going to be able to get like another three dots in because we're really getting towards, uh, towards the outside now of the, of the moon dollar. Moon dollar, by the way, is a meditation wheel. And um, by that, I mean sometimes any, actually any kind of artistic design, you know, try some swimming, which is like looking into um, any reflective surface like water or a preferred candle type of thing, and you get um, uh, able to focus your attention on uh, that. It's thought to help people meditate. Raises the question why do people meditate? And one of the reasons is for clarity, is to kind of clear the mind, because we typically have so much going on in our lives that you know we don't have time to really give a lot of thought to um, some things that we should. And uh, you know, every single successful person that I have ever met is someone who meditates. They meditate. So um, take on the habits of successful people. Meditate, and a lot of people, a lot of successful people also um, journal and whatnot. So I mean, I used to many moons ago journal, but it's been a long time. Okay, I'm going to add a little red, some of this pink, just to change the color of the pink. Little bit. I still want to keep the lighter pink because I want to put the lighter pink on the outside, but I want this darker, darker pink kind of on the inside. So I'm really just kind of, um, I put a little bit of red into this pink here and just mixing it up and just using this side, which is just, as I say, it's just a tint of this darker, darker. Okay, so I'm going to go with a little bit bigger tool, okay, and use just that daca daca. And that is gonna go right here. And I will show it to you. But we are so getting there. And in record good time too. Maybe, I shouldn't say that right away. And I'm putting in my lead dots again. All right, and this is this is what it looks like. Okay. And now I want to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to clean off this tool and put it into the water because again, we do not want that thing to dry on there. All right, I am going to use the, uh, the tool that is like, um, 
like the pen point, okay? And, oh, I should walk. Should I do bigger ones? Let's do bigger ones. Um, I take it all back, all right? Before you do the pen point one, let's go um, again to that other, the one that we were using to put the lead dots on and do the same three dot technique that we were doing before. Okay, so, and I will, I will certainly show you what I'm doing. Okay, so that's coming out a little bit watery here. Not sure I like that. But I'm doing the same three dot technique and I'm gonna make sure it's not too watery. I'm mixing it up again. I like the three dot technique because, um, again, it kind of gives a nice shape to, to our dots here. General shape. Show you what I'm doing. Okay, here's my here's my three dots. All right, now I am going to switch to the smaller dot er. I'm going to mix a little bit more red in, into this paint because I'm finding that it's kind of loose. Okay, when you use different um, different brands, they actually um, they mix them different. So always important to kind of test them out first, try them out. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same technique. Come down here like so. And I will show you how beautiful this looks. Look, look, look. Is that not awesome? Okay, and like I said, at this point, it's so big. I'm actually only getting like three dots. So down on the sides. This one could come out just a little more. We have a little room to play around, not too much. Not some. Hold that tool up straight. Like I said, at this point, this, uh, when we were doing the inside, there was so much room there and you could go all the way down the sides that um, it took a while. But I have to say, this, this side is buzzing right along. And you do not have to buzz right along. So off the recording. So exciting. Okay, so we actually only have one more um, row to do, and that is the, the lighter pinks here, the same pinks that is in, uh, in these big dots. Okay, so um, I'm going to take and use. Of that away. I think we need the bigger one here. So the one that is like the uh, Q-tip stick, okay? And I'm going to put it in the light, the light pink, and I'm going to make the lead dots. Okay, now we are getting close to uh, the edge of the canvas board. So if you happen to be going off the edge of the canvas board, let it be okay. You do not have to be perfect in any stretch of the imagination at all. And I'll show you, um, I'll show you my edges, the ones that are close. And you'll see that they're, they're quite okay. Okay, so right, right on the edge. 
right? Again, going to do the whole three dot thing just because I absolutely love the way that looks. Try to keep them close together. Nice. And again, if they don't come out perfectly round, feel free to kind of redot them. Okay, you are the creator here. Okay, so now I have my three dots here on each one. I'm going to clean this off and put that away. I'm going to put it in the water because, again, we don't want anything to dry it. Talk so much, I know you're moving. Oh. Okay, do the trick. So pick one that is a little bit smaller and just do two more dots because we're going to go smaller still. Okay. And let me hold this up for you. As soon as I get some good dots on here, that is okay. So what I'm doing is I'm putting two more dots on each side. So I'm going to go dot 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 dot. Okay, is that, can you see that? Okay, we have the three dots. So I'm going to go dot 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 dot. Okay, that's what I did here. Dot 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 dot. Okay, my darlings, let's do it. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine or anyone else's. Even when uh, we do these uh, in-person classes, they come out different. Everyone's comes out a little bit different. And it kind of should because, you know, everyone is different. We have different personalities. Some people use more paint. Some people's paint is thinner. Some people's paint is thicker. Um, you know, the colors might be slightly different depending on, you know, how much white did you put in your paint, so on and so forth. So absolutely, absolutely let it be okay if it's different because, they're actually pretty in that way. Okay, so now I have the dots going around there. Cleaning this baby up. Okay, and now going back to the, uh, the kind of uh, pen point. All right, and I'm going to finish this off doing using this. All right, and I'm going to continue walking these dots. And I will show you what I mean as soon as I get one done. I'm going to show you. Walking the dots. Oh, let me fix that one because I'm a good dot. Okay, so see how I finished? I brought it the rest of the way around. I'm going to put more dots here and here. And at this point, I can only fit like two or three. So, and in most cases, only two. So, don't worry about it if you can only fit two and on a different one, you can kind of fit three. Oh, I just put a big blob there. I do not want the blob. Okay, so I'm going to have to fix my blob. This um, so I um, actually kind of made kind of a big blob right there. So I'm going to pick some of it up, hopefully without ruining. Aha! Blob taker offer. I love it. Okay, so these are uh, these are the ones that I've done so far. Okay. 
continue. I would tell you that um, even after you finish these, I know I held some other ones up at the beginning of the class. Some of them had sparkles on them. Um, you can you can do whatever you want to them. Uh, I always kind of varnish them. I'll put a finish on them afterwards. And if you're going to to do that, um, you can varnish them, then sparkle them. You can put faux gems on them, which is extremely cool. And potty hotty with those. Let me try and see if there's one dot doesn't want to come out round. Okay, there it goes. Well, don't trip on me too. Okay. Ta-da! Put this on. Look, look. Nice and nice. Okay. And like I said, this is actually kind of like this one better. <laughs> Because we use the colors that we wanted. And you did an excellent job. Now, I'm actually looking at some of these really dark, dark ones in here. I really like them. And I'm wondering about top dotting them a little bit. Okay, so I know that these don't have any top dots on them because I actually wanted to keep it kind of simple for everyone. But let me tell you that what you can do, and I'll show you is these dark blue dots, I am going to uh, put my daughter in this light blue. And once this is actually dry enough, okay, and I'm not sure it is yet, I can top dot them. See it? Okay, so you can actually see the dark blue dots underneath, and then you can see light blue dots on top. Like I said, I know it's not in the handout, but sometimes you just have to go rogue. Okay, isn't that pretty? So I'm going to top that one. Like I said, for the most part, this piece is done. You know, if you're happy with the way that it is, just stop. You don't have to top dot anything. Uh, if you do decide to top dot, you can top dot anything. You can top dot the big dots, the small dots. Just always use a dotting tool that's a little bit smaller than what you're top dotting so that both colors actually show through. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Okay, so I top dotted those, but you can still see the dark blue. Okay, I didn't fill the whole circle. Okay. So maybe, what else do I talk to? It? Maybe those little guys. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the water. I'm going to use this. And maybe I'm going to try some of this really light blue. Maybe kind of top dot some of these. Oh, yes, I really like that. So top dotting is kind of um, the next lesson type of class. But these, the only thing that really needs to happen is that the dots that you're top dotting need to be dry. Now, like I said, acrylic paints dry relatively fast. So this is pretty, uh, it's pretty dry. Hope it's nothing new. Try to get them in the middle. Okay, and I will show you how it looks like. And it's like anything else. Once you once you do these, you're gonna like be so addicted. It's like I can't tell you how many of these I've done. And um, 
this is this is actually the first one I have done without guidelines. And um, I actually like how free it feels. I'm not having to worry about those lines and whether or not I stayed in them. I actually, you know, I liked the blue that was on there, but I actually like it even better top dotted. What do you think? Cool. I'm wondering, let me see, what else do I want? <laughs> Top dot, created a monster here. Okay, well actually, the rest of the dots are not quite dry yet, so I'm gonna behave myself and not dot over them, uh, except for that blue dot in the middle. I think they can have a, just make sure that the tool you use is smaller than the one you're top dotting. Okay, so we'll top dot right in the middle there. Okay, I am going to stop playing and I'm going to call this one finished. All right, I'm going to let it dry really, really good and I'm may add some sparkle to it but i always put a finish on them okay it protects the paint and before you put the finish on if you have any spots like where i spilled the paint and stuff like that go ahead with the black and fill them in but wait until it's nice and dry first before you do anything extra to it okay so once again i'm joan turner of joan Dot gallery and um, I am also the resident art teacher at uh, the Drake Council on Aging, which is now has its staff back in place. And they never stopped with essential services. They always had essential services running, but they don't have the, um, these kind of programs running quite yet, okay? So um, when they do, okay, I teach a class there, and I was teaching every Wednesday from noon to two, a very open class where people are working on whatever they want to in whatever mediums they want to work in. Plus we do a once a month fun and paint, which is our version of wine and paint for our seniors. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. So we expect to see you there when the, uh, when the center reopens, uh, we want to see you there, okay? So if you have, um, we have lots of lots of tutorials. I think this is like my 11th, 10th or 11th tutorial for Drake It. Um, I uh, am a hypnotist and a meditator. So I have some of those uh, tutorials online too and something called TV, Tibbs TV Mini Chat. Okay, and that one's www.intuitivebodyandsoul.com. All right, um, so come call me 978-807-7608 and say, hey, what do you got? Or email me, Jonissa, J-O-A-N is in Nancy, I-S is in Stephen, A at Comcast.net, um, or intuitive body and soul at gmail.com. Right, you can get a hold of me like a zillion different ways. So you can say, hey, look at I need a meditation. Uh, you know, how to, or you can say, how do I find the links to your tutorials? Uh, whatever your heart desires, okay, I care and can help you out. Okay, my darlings, I am going to find the off button, and I will see you later. Happy painting. Bye for now.